So, I think it's finally time. I'm gonna battle damage my Mark 85. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to my channel. I'm Frank, and uh, I'm sorry if I sound a little weird right now. Al my allergies are going insane. I'm gonna do my best not to sniffle, cough, sneeze, and do any of that on camera. Anyway, uh, WonderCon is coming up. I'm meeting up with the Iron Legion again, the Iron Idiots, and we are going to Anaheim WonderCon. I am super excited for this. With that, I need to repair my Mark 85. And what do I mean by repair? Yeah. Old girl has taken some hits. I've worn this suit a few times now and paint chips off. Now I know a lot of people say, put felt here, put clear tape there. It doesn't always work like that. You can put a lot of felt and padding in certain places, but you're gonna get wear and tear and repainting it for every con, it, it just gets outlandish and wild. So what to do? Now, arguably, I've gotten pretty good at doing battle damage, and while I love my super battle damaged Mark 85, I'm not gonna go this heavy on it. I was thinking more something like the Mark 85 Hot Toys. Now, this figure right here has light battle damage, scuffs, dings, nicks, in spots that aren't the normal wear and tear that I'm getting from my suit. He has a few nicks on his faceplate, his arms have a few scratches, his legs have a few scratches. It's mostly noticeable on the gold. So these are the spots on my suit. I'm gonna start to very reluctantly nick up a little bit and start to uh, put a little damage. Now, I'm gonna go very simple and very light, kind of thinking more pragmatically if, if he fell over, if he got scratched, and you guys don't wanna hear this, you just wanna see me start doing it. So as I prep this thing for WonderCon, I'm done with the repairs. <sighs> I'm so scared. Let's get started.
Oh, so, did you guys know I'm like really bad at making thumbnails for my videos? Because if you guys don't like the thumbnail or you don't see the video, you won't click on the video and you won't watch it. So what was the point of making the thumbnail anyway if it was bad and it just, I spiral out of control and I hate it. But I'm really trying to start fixing that and cleaning up a lot of my old thumbnails with the help of today's sponsor, Skillshare. As a lot of you know, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes for creative and curious people. It's a great place to go to pick up a new skill or hobby, or in my case, try to fix your awful YouTube thumbnails. One of my favorite things about Skillshare is being able to either binge it all at once and just do the whole course, or I can break it up into little bite-sized chunks, and it might take you a few days, weeks, or even months, but that's totally fine. In my case, I kind of chose to just binge this right out. The name of the series is Make Great YouTube Thumbnails by Evan at Polymatter. Now, I know what some of you are probably thinking. You can usually search a lot of this information on the internet, but I don't know, I'm more of a visual learner and having somebody explain things to me in a video course sticks so much better in my mind. I even made a little list based off of his videos of the do's and don'ts, and I'm gonna hang this next to my computer now, and every time I'm making a thumbnail, I can be like, oh hey, don't do that, and hopefully this will help. Over the next few weeks and probably months, I'm gonna be going back slowly through a lot of my old videos, redoing some of the thumbnails, updating them, and kind of laughing at my own you know, mistakes. So if you guys are like me and you wanna jump at this opportunity and learn something new, the first 1,000 of my subscribers to use the link down below will get a free trial of premium membership. Hopefully what I've learned from this class actually helps me make a good thumbnail for this very video. And if you guys found this video because of the thumbnail, let me know down below, leave a comment. Um, I'd be really curious to find out. Anyway, that's enough talking, let's get back to the video. So uh, that was the right choice. Having this thing slightly weathered and battle damaged and no longer having to worry about the paint chipping a little bit or bumping into a doorway or the you know wear and tear parts getting damaged was so unbelievably freeing. I, I wish I had done it sooner. I think the big reason I was very, very willing and at the same time reluctant to do something like this was this paint job has more or less controlled my entire build life for this suit for well close to two years. I was proud to have this thing beautiful and pristine and I, I am, I'm still very proud of the paint job on it. And that's not to say I still don't care about it, but not having to really worry and nitpick over the small perfections on it, I, I, I don't know, I, there are no words for it. Um, it is freeing, that's all I can say. Now, like was the plan from the get-go, this is still just surface level scratches, dings, and dents. Nothing into the plastic. I didn't use a soldering iron. I didn't actually go into the plastic itself. So at any point, I wanna strip this back down and repaint it even bigger and better. I'm still free to do that with not having to, uh, you know, fix big blemishes or problems. And if at any point you're worried about somebody else, other people coming up to you and pointing out these small minor imperfections, or even in my case, really big battle damage imperfections that you think are hard to miss, no one noticed. And what I mean by that is it didn't jump out at anybody. People weren't walking by me saying like, oh, your suit took a lot of damage. Haha, <laughs> nice paint job, loser. That looks terrible. No one did that. And if they did do that, they're kind of an a-hole. And I don't know how happy I'd be about that. But the people who stopped and stood there and looked at my suit and were, you know, admiring it, then they started to notice the battle damage. Then they started to notice the intentional marks I had put on it. And they kind of complimented me on it. It made it look more real and worn and grounded in reality. And I, I don't know, I appreciate that. I really do hope this video helped you guys better understand my reasonings for doing this and maybe it'll help some of your decisions moving on in the future. If you're going to be wearing these things to cons and events, unfortunately they're just going to take damage or you're not going to really be able to walk around and enjoy yourself. 
And you know what? I'll give you guys the same advice I just recently gave to somebody else who asked, hey, I don't want my suit to get damaged. What do I do? Hmm? Make two or don't wear it. Oh, and for those people telling me to just use like an automotive 2K clear coat, um, you know your car's paint still scratches when you rub into it, right? It's not as protective. It might prolong the inevitable a little bit, but honestly, you're going to be spending so much more for that type of paint. Not that it's bad. It's amazing paint, but that's not really going to solve the problem we're talking about in this video. Paint scratches. Unfortunately, that's just kind of how it is. But if you do have your own little methods, tips, or tricks on how do you protect your paint on your cosplay pieces, leave some comments down below. Maybe we can get a list going of different methods and maybe even some stuff I've never thought of and this way we can help out other people. And while you're down there leaving a comment because you're definitely down there leaving a comment right now and you're not actually watching the video, make sure as you scroll back up, you hit the subscribe button. This way you stay up to date on all the videos I'm posting. Oh yeah, and that notification bell, that helps too. But that's gonna be a wrap for this video, guys. One last big thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring the video. Remember, the link's down below. Take advantage of that. As always, Thank you so much for watching, guys, and you have a good day.